was a refugee from the Middle East. We were actually immigrants uh, in Kuwait. At that time, uh, my name wasn't Essen Zafar, it was Essen Hussein. There was a lot of bigotry uh, in the United States against that name in particular. When the violence against our family started becoming a little crazy, my dad changed my name to his first name. 18 years after my name was changed, we elected Barack Hussein Obama. We still have a lot of work to do. The refugees we meet, they kind of hit the ground running and their first priority is just their basic needs, their education, their employment, taking care of their family. In Orange County specifically, if uh, you are a single refugee, um, you're receiving refugee cash assistance and through that program you're living off of $300 a month. And we have families, you know, average a family of six will receive $900 in aid per month in Orange County. Once they're kind of situated, they're considered invisibly homeless pretty much. Even if you have family in the UK, um, the idea is that you can join them from a refugee camp. So we see Calais, um, which is called the jungle. It's one of the most horrific places. I've been there. People risk their lives to, um, to get out of it. America takes in 2,290 um, refugees from Syria. There is 4.2 million Syrian refugees at the moment. In camps, there's, you know, we're not the homogeneous population. There's all sorts of different people. There are criminalities, people preying on the vulnerable. When countries actually open their borders and say we'll have a few of them, they're eager to leave. But when you get there, you're suffering from PSD, you're suffering from other trauma-related incidents. My parents left Ethiopia in 75, went to a refugee camp in Somalia. Um, they thought they would be processed, come to the U.S. Eight years went by. So average wait time for refugees we speak of in these refugee camps is about 17 years. The individuals that do get here, they've, they've gone through so much that you're talking about the most resilient our quota for refugees, we were 85,000 in the last fiscal year and we're aiming to accept 110,000 in this fiscal year 2017. There is a lot of ignorance that, that drives some of the uh, kind of pushback, not just in the United States, but in Europe and in Asia and many other countries. But on the flip side, there's also a lot of work done by people in general in terms of welcoming uh, individuals that come to the United States. We recruited the secretary to do a number of online videos on the refugee resettlement process, what our values are. The secretary in particular does a lot of engagement such as this with community members and organizations to set the record straight. People perceive the refugee um, resettlement program as an, quote, an opportunity to plant people in this country who can then do bad things. In the last few years, all the terrorist things that have happened in this country have been by homegrown people. So this notion of the other as the perpetrator of violence here is something that we should be reminding ourselves is not actually true. A person requesting refugee status into the United States undergoes a level of screening that no other traveler of any kind coming to the United States undergoes. The other thing to note is that the majority of refugees, especially from Syria, that are being resettled are women and children. The way that governments can change people's perception is by stating what um, refugees actually bring to the community. People pay their taxes, they open businesses, their children become doctors, lawyers, professionals. To raise the awareness, like we've done today, that gives it a sense of perspective. Remember that there are 65 million refugees. They're seeking refuge because of war, you know, political persecution, religious. The refugee situation is dire. And as human beings, we have a responsibility.